Okay, so here we go, our conversation for IDPD on the business of representation about the management and the talent. And I am, I've been really looking forward to this conversation because I actually love all three of our panelists and I'm hoping to invite trouble into this conversation and I'm hoping to invite free flow. Um, and so here we go to start off. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm the troublemaker, Caroline Casey, behind the valuable 500 or in front of it or in the way of it, I don't know. A little audio description, I am a white woman with very white blonde hair because I have ocular albinism. I'm wearing a black pair of old glasses, um, sitting in a hotel room with very pale, yucky, mucky walls, uh, a luminous pink top and a blue jacket. And uh, I am going to hand over now to our first a uh, panelist who is going to be Dom. Dom, give us a little bit of who, what, when, where, and why about you. Absolutely. Thanks, Catherine. Uh, Caroline. Um, it's okay. You can call me Catherine. It's, it's good. It's no problem. No, 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 don't worry. Oh, Caroline. Um, I'm Dom Hyams. I'm Head of Strategy at Purple Goat Agency, um, which is a disability influencer marketing agency, uh, which long and short of that means that we work with brands from across the globe to create representative um, campaigns that are authentic um, using disabled talent, um, diverse disabled talent at that. Um, my my background is in TV production and I was also the um, first editor-in-chief of the Disability Power List, which I believe Valuable 500 was number one this year, which is awesome. So yeah, congrats so to awesome. you guys. Um, and uh, just a bit of audio description for you. Um, I'm uh, of short stature, I've got brittle bones. Um, I'm sat in my bedroom, which we recently tidied the bed on, so it's nice and clean. I'm wearing a leather flat cap, like always, because I'm slightly balding, and uh, I wish my beard was slightly more trimmed. Okay. Well, I mean, I'm loving the leather flat cap. It's very <laughs> Irish, yeah. Um, Nina, who, what, when, where, why, and a bit of trouble? Hi, Caroline. Um, so I'm Nina Tame. I am a disability writer. I'm a disability mentor. My background is actually, I used to be a counsellor. So I now use those skills and do mentoring with disabled people. And I also have a reasonably large Instagram account, which still surprises me. Um, and I kind of use that to create content around disability, as well as sort of, um, like what Don was saying, I'm somebody that does the ads for brands when they come up. Um, oh, and my description is I'm a white woman. I've got a short brown hair and a big brown fringe. I'm wearing black headphones and a black sort of V-neck fluffy cardigan with little gemstones on it. And I'm sitting in my office, which has a white wooden panelled wall and some quite bright cushions behind me. And that's me. And that's where your colour comes from, because you usually are wearing colour, but you're wearing your dark elegant look tonight I believe is that right that is yeah elegant I'll take that Caroline thank you for that um yeah <laughs> that'll do um Andrea lovely to have you with us uh the lady with the best glasses on the planet uh who what when where why and a little bit about yourself absolutely hi everybody I'm Andrea I'm going to provide my audio description first I am a brown skinned black woman uh today I have a silver turban on my head along with some silver glasses and earrings. I'm wearing a navy blue faux leather top. I'm very excited about this top. Um, and <laughs> behind me, I have a variety of wall decor in my um, home office that includes the my personal brand logo, Andrea Lamont, that has my signature glasses as part of the logo, because that is that's my thing. Um, and then the Levant Consulting logo, which brings me to a little more about who I am. So I lead a strategy and communications firm, um, Social Impact, that really focuses on shaping the way the world reaches, views, and values disabled people. One of our big signature projects that we worked on was serving as impact producers for the Netflix Oscar-nominated film Crip Camp, which led me to being the first uh, visibly disabled Black woman on the Oscars red carpet. Um, my passion is really around um, disability, looking at it from a, um, and exploring disability from an intersectional lens. And so I'm excited about 
today's conversation, specifically more thinking about representation. Excited to be here. Well, let's just dive in because I think let's start with Crip Camp. Um, come on, what a phenomenon, a phenomenon. Um, however, it is one of very few films like this out there. Do you think this is going to have the impact to drive the change that we want to see? And the second thing that really keeps coming up again and again and again, outside documentary when we're speaking about acting, is about the big conversation about people with disabilities in acting positions about disabilities. So they're the kind of two kind of questions I know people want us to ask you about. Do you think Crip Camp is gonna change this conversation? More importantly, change what's gonna happen on the issue of disability actors in disability roles. Absolutely, it already is changing. I mean, the what we're seeing, um, you know, already from in front of the camera, but I think what's most important is what's happening um, behind the camera, the conversations that we had, even with the Oscars, it was the first time that they had a ramp at the Oscars. And so what it were, it, what Crip Camp really did was set a precedent, not just um, for the film itself, but accessibility um, in, in media, in Hollywood, across the globe, and um, continuing, you know, more and more of us are part of these conversations. Organizations have been, you know, developed now that are focusing on disability um, representation in front of and behind the camera. So it absolutely, I've never been, I'm more busier, busy than ever um, but because of, of what Crip Camp has done. And so much so that when I started on Crip Camp, um, I, I was a team of one. A leading a consulting firm and now we're a team of seven. Uh, so, so that just goes to show you that um, it really has highlighted um, both, both from a media perspective, but also in general, I think, you know, in tech industries and, and other uh, business um, aspects, the importance of disability representation, which speaks to what you're saying around acting. And that is Yes, authentic, you know, people with the lived experiences. Um, and again, what I think Crip Camp did well was show, you know, showing different types of disabilities, but um, it now is bringing more conversations around other forms of disability that have not, that are typically not seen or talked about, um, hidden disabilities, and then also those intersectional experiences. So for example, acknowledging that, you know, the experience of a black disabled person is not going to be the same as the experience of, you know, perhaps a white disabled person or a queer disabled person. And what I'm excited about when it comes to uh, authentic representation in media is that we're going to be able to see more diverse experiences. And I think what the world has seen the very limited amount that the world has seen um, in the past and kind of starting to really just show disabled people as people, um, which is, you know, what we all know is, is the truth, right? Well, I think one of this, this word authenticity, and I'm going to just come to you, Dom, you talk about that campaigns that scream authenticity. And also, look, you're a business. First of all, how old is Purple Goat? It's a relatively new business. Andrea's been saying she's gone from one to seven. She couldn't be busier. Is that what you're finding as well? Is there that sort of screaming or yearning for real authenticity? And the business of your business? I mean, you're doing yeah. phenomenally well, aren't you guys? Yeah, absolutely. So very similar here at Purple Goat. We went from one person, Martin Sibley, um, uh, April last year, and now we're we just hired our eleventh person, um, which is which is amazing. amazing. And and yes, there absolutely is now this desire of businesses to start, you know, thinking about this. And I I say desire, but but it's an awareness now. Like the awareness is growing, and maybe lockdown was in part to do with that awareness because you know we were starting to think about reasonable adjustments. We were starting to think about those that are shielding, and and so conversations around disability started cre creeping into the mainstream narrative which maybe they haven't done in the same way obviously in 2020 you know we had black lives matter and that was an amazing 
opportunity for people to educate themselves around race and and kind of really kind of introspectively look and 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 learn and you know we haven't yet had that moment for for disability and i think the pandemic as a whole has been going a little way towards that so it's it's starting to creep into into the business kind of mindset around thinking about diversity also meaning meaning disability as well and yeah from from, from what we do and creating creating our campaigns it it really is exciting because you know as andrea was saying it's it's utilizing real human beings and their own lived experience to convey what can be a nuanced message and that you can't see in a, a five second advert appearance you, you know that you where the, where the advert usually is probably a stereotypical image of a disabled individual because that's how they've learned to convey disability quickly even if it's just you know to get that representation there so it's so lovely to be working with parents with business people with you know you know all, all sorts of people from all different backgrounds uh, with hidden disabilities you know like and telling really nuanced stories about their own experience of that and and it's you know wonderful to also you know see the results of that because we're coming back to brands and they're genuinely open mouthed in in how well our campaigns are doing you know we we're we're not denying that there's no doubt sort of companies that think it's a hearts and minds exercise when we first engage with them and then we you know present back the re report the report to them and you know we sit there and they go oh my word this has outperformed our other campaigns and and we can't wait to do more and and that's just amazing and and that you know obviously that's part of what we do we want there to be great business results you know alongside improving representation and doing all the other stuff that on personal levels we want to achieve as a as a company but it's great to have that firepower behind us to to be able to show that it's a win-win situation for everyone and so when you're talking about that sort of the firepower behind it and that authentic representation. Nina, coming to you. So you guys, I guess, must be working together because you're some of that talent that, that Dom and Purple Goat would work with. I'm going to come to this conversation that might be, if I'm being controversial or, or I'm, let me know, but the issue about being paid, paid talent. Can I just ask, it used to be, we used to have to feel grateful that we were ever to ask to speak or be on a panel because we were these kind of inspiring people telling stories. Are you seeing that changing, Nina? Because you you have more than a little following. You have a phenomenal following. And whether you're comfortable with the word influencer, but you do sway people's decisions. Are you finding that people you are being rewarded financially properly for your talent, properly for your influence? Is that changing? Um, I'll tell you, like, so far, we, so I've only been doing this for a couple of years, but I've actually found a lot of the time that the disability adjacent companies, um, mm -hmm. so whether that's companies that are making mobility aids or things like that, have actually been the worst at expecting me to either work for free um, because uh, I think it's almost like, well, she'll be happy with those little crumbs. Um you know, or just the the phenom can't say that word, um, the huge amount of work that they have expected me to do in return for an ad. I don't think the disability adjacent companies understand social media. I don't think they understand as I don't like how big the disabled community is on social media. Um, and I've actually found uh, most of the time that you know, I get sort of paid better from, yeah, the companies that have nothing to do with disability, not talking about disability run companies, as I say, but yeah, I've been quite sort of shocked by, um, I can't sort of name names, but for example, um, I was trying to uh, do, because I do writing and I've been paid really well for my writing through a platform that was run by disabled folks. And when I got in touch with another magazine that was around disability but didn't have a single disabled person working for them they brushed me off they brushed me off they eventually got me on the front of the magazine didn't obviously get paid for that or my time or anything which is fine and then when I suggested to them again like hey you've had great feedback of this magazine how about we discuss that kind of working thing they were like yeah we'd love you to do some regular writing we'd like to do this 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 and this and I come back and said just checking 
this is paid work, right? Because I don't have the time to do unpaid work at the minute. And they were like, oh, um, yeah, we'll get back to you. And I was just, yeah, so sorry, that was a bit of a waffle. But I sort of No, finding... it's not, but I'm, it's not a waffle. Lena. I want to know why do you think companies are starting to see the value of your work and are willing to put dollars behind it now? Is it because you did bring a different experience? Is it because they're seeing the differentiator? I mean, surely that must be surprising to you. You would have imagined it would be the other way around, no? Well, I think it's because for so for the sort of few, like the disability adjacent companies I've spoke, spoken about, especially people who are making mobility aids, you've only got to look on their Instagram pages if they've even got one or their advertising to see that apparently they think disabled people are just white and generally elderly as well. Now, obviously, I say this as a white wheelchair user, which is pretty much the poster girl for disability. Um, but I think they just tend to, you know, I mean, I sort of, I've approached a few of them about it and said, look, you need to diversify your models and stuff like, you know, because even disabled people don't feel like you're advertising your disabled products to them because, you know, you just seem to be only advertising them to sort of white elderly people. Um, and I think, I think maybe because they've been, I don't know, I think maybe because they've been in it, but sort of it's that kind of nothing about us without us, isn't it? So I think a lot of these companies are run by people who think they understand disability, but they don't employ any disabled people. Because if you had a disabled person working for them, then they'd be able to say, hey, you know, maybe we need to sort this out. So it's that kind of feeling of, well, we know what disabled people want because we've been in this business for years. Um, and I think other, I mean, other brands, I think are just starting to slow. I noticed this year for um, Disability Pride, I was invited to do a couple of talks for quite big, well-known um, companies, but that was purely because they had disabled people working for them who would push to have me come on and talk because otherwise I just don't think they would have bothered. So I think it's, you know, I think, it's about not just kind of giving out the crumbs and getting disabled people in the adverts and on the telly. It's getting disabled people actually working for these companies, you know, mm -hmm. in these positions, whether it's, you know, Andrea, like, you know, with your producing and stuff, like, it's amazing. You could tell, like, Crip Camp is, like, my favourite thing ever. I'm trying not to yeah. fangirl really hard <laughs> because it was <laughs> the first time I'd watched something and thought, this is accurate. This isn't. This is yeah. a story being told by disabled people because generally it's being told through a, you know, oh, disability is tragic and sad and oh, it's such a shame. Or it's being told through a, you're so inspiring. You know, you made a sandwich. Well done. And that's it. You know, the small representation that we have is that just those two things in general. So to see Crip Camp and I literally was just telling everybody I knew that wasn't disabled, please Same. watch this. Please, Same. please watch this. And you know, actually understand that disabled people have sex. We're funny. You know, we might have jobs. We might do this. We might do that. Just it's yeah. A, a representation. I think the lack of representation and you know, as I say, those two lenses that we are seeing through is just like the biggest. I think stumbling block to inclusion and everything because the representation is still so small and it's still being told by non-disabled people. I think. Can I just? I just want to. Yeah, get in. I'm just going to say that I, we're seeing that from a client perspective. Um, and we, it's interesting that um, we find our ideal client to be the ones that, that like literally admit that they just don't know what they yes. don't know. Yes. And, and, and it tends to be the bigger, even, you know, it might be corporate, whatever, but disability ones that have disability in the name or their I feel like I'm in so much trouble for saying this. No, but, go for it. <laughs> um, but it is like there's this thing where if people feel like they know a they know and they're just almost sometimes bringing us in for what they think is a little snippet. So for example, for us it's around um, the intersect, you know, disability justice intersectionality, but they feel like they otherwise know disability. And so we're having to do a lot of, of um, it's, it's a lot harder, it feels like, when people feel like they know just enough um, versus ones that are like, we trust you, tell us what to do, you know, because that's where it's, it's just so 
interesting to me, um, like you said, the ones that have, might have disability but don't have disabled people on their boards. They don't have disabled people, you know, in, in their staff or they have one and um, the terminology that they're using, it's very service oriented as opposed to um, inclusive in so many ways. So it, it has been interesting over the past year to see what we find to be the clients that we love working with. And it, it ends up being the ones that are like, we don't know, we know that we should be doing this. Can you please tell us versus, well, we know, we know these things and we just want you to almost validate us in a way, you know? And Dom, do you find that, like, are you finding some of your clients are having that experience as Andrea speaks to going, listen, we just want a brilliant campaign that's different and it's differentiating. And are they companies that have nothing to do with disability at all and are just willing to pioneer into a new space? I mean, can you give us some of some examples of the campaigns or some yeah. of your clients? Yeah, we'll do. Um, so we have like different campaigns, obviously speaking to different audiences and different purposes, of course. Um, but we, for example, work with Starling Bank and Starling Bank is a challenger bank, I believe UK based. Um, and uh, we speak with them and we explain to them that for the disabled community, a lot of people find, you know, online banking as in app based banking more accessible to their needs and and they can utilize the accessibility features of their mobile phone to actually bank with much more ease and heading out to a, a traditional banking environment and doing it in in person. And uh, and that was kind of seemed like news to them, which was amazing. And uh, and so so we kind of have had this amazing you know relationship now with Starlin, where they are so keen to create a more accessible you know banking experience for their customers. But ultimately, they also realise that that's a great you know differentiator for them and a niche for them that they've not really thought about. So we're able to create really amazing and, and we go back to it authentic content um with people that genuinely benefit from utilizing styling bank um and then similarly you know in return they they get maybe more customers and they get happy customers and and it also we get that representation on the screen another example would be you know working with virgin media mm -hmm. and virgin media you know they this was a campaign based around um, the Paralympics, so maybe it's a bit of a cheat, but you know they were really like, you know, wanting to make sure that, that they create the most creative, viral content they could, and that was by getting that diversity of disability experience to all partake in a Mexican wave. But obviously, not everyone can do a Mexican wave, so we had this amazing mix of creative applications for how we all, you know, share this moment together during the Paralympics and how everyone contribute their Mexican waves. And and they were really like, you know, really, really keen on getting that, you know, authentic creativity. And and we were blown away by some of the some of the kind of interpretations of that that we had. And you know, really insightful for a lot of people too. And then one final one that I'll just go into is, you know, we work with Highways England and that they had a campaign that went out, I think last year originally or the start of this year, um, called Go Left. Um, which it, originally it kind of went out and didn't necessarily, you know, get the the best reception. And then we we made a kind of disability specific uh, campaign around that, and it's all about highway safety. And actually, once you tell the stories of highway safety through the experiences of disabled individuals, it becomes a more important kind of conversation, and people kind of connect with it because, oh yeah. For that individual, this is a really important topic because their considerations around highway safety aren't going to be the same as mine. And so actually having this conversation is really valuable. And again, you know, the sentiment we see around cam a campaign like that was really amazing, really powerful. And and they saw great results as a, as a result of that. So it's, it's, it's lovely to see, you know, that we can kind of do these different types of campaign and get different results based on what the client is looking for and do you think their clients and nina i'm coming to you on this one do you think their clients are when when a brand engages you or a business engages you on anybody here 
do they do you really believe they're starting to see they're accessing a new demographic accessing a new customer base that they haven't so nina if there's brands that you're working with or for or people that are contacting you is it because they're excited to see that access to that new voice through you i mean rather than well we're just going to do this because it's a disability thing do you know what i mean is it is it because they're seeing that we there's a market here or there's a demographic that we want to engage with I don't know. See, I think my cynic, no, I don't know if it's cynical or not, but, you know, I have an account with big numbers. So, you know, a brand is going to benefit from that regardless of whether I'm a wheelchair user or not. I mean, and then obviously there's the flip side of that where I've had brands like gift me something and then they've used my photo on their web page so that they can get all that. Oh, you're so yeah. diverse when they're really, really not. Um <laughs> but I think like for like for me, sort of I've so for example, I work with Sky TV. Um I've worked with them mm -hmm. this year. And what's been like obviously none of that is about disability, it's just me doing adverts for yep. various shows and this and that. But what's been nice is they know I'm a mum. So sometimes I will, you know, I might be doing something around a kids film and the kids will be in it. And you know, and I think that is just that kind of I long for incidental disability, you know, to see a disabled person in a film or an advert or something else where you don't find out what's wrong with them. Because, you know, a disabled person's medical information has nothing to do with anybody else. So for me, I've loved being able to do this stuff where, yeah, I happen to be in a wheelchair. And that's not like, you know. I do stuff despite my disability. I don't mean it in that way. Um, you know, I'm very proud of my disabled identity, but, you know, my medical stuff hasn't had to have come into it. It's yeah. not been like, oh, you know, I've got this, this and this and I need this product. You know, it's just like, hey, these are my kids and we're watching this teddy program. And that I think is so important because as much as on my platform, you know, I will talk about, um, you know, access issues and discrimination and all the rest of it. Sometimes just me putting a video up with me and my kids in itself is like oh all right wheelchair users can have children like they have sex to have the children it's like mind-blowing um you know and i think that in itself is is really important i think i just went off on a tangent i don't know if i answered no this. actually you, you you've picked up on something for me that is one i think all of us say it would be so great for us to be public and speaking as having an identity but not about disability and i think that's when for all of us, right? That's when it becomes something that we are all working for is just the normalization and the integration of our experience into anybody's. And I think that's what we'd love to. And I know that work that you do with Sky and that's where we want to, to be moving towards. It's you as Nina, as, yeah. uh, as a mom, as you say. Just, just to jump in on that, like quite often a conversation we have with brands is, no, no, we don't we don't need to talk about the disability in this campaign. Like the, the that that will be evident in the in the content itself to create that authentic storytelling if if the individual wants to talk about it but having the representation you know in the way that they're going to tell it and the way that they're going to communicate with you and your brand that that will be enough and that will that will do great stuff you know obviously they're not experts in disability and so they're saying oh we should you know, have this mentioned about you know how they use it or we should have this about how it's easier for them to access it it's like you need to trust the influencer as well. And again, like we, we said just before we started recording about the word influencer mm -hmm. and whether, you know, yes, it's got a little bit of a kind of negative association and I completely understand why it just has become this shortcut word to for someone that works in social media marketing, really. Um, so whether you're a content creator or an influencer, you know, any any of them are appropriate from our perspective um but yeah some sometimes we have to tell people like you've got to lean on their experience here um because they are the expert they're the expert of their audience and that's how you're going to get the best result and um and it's really powerful when they when they empower us and empower the individual to do that well look you've got 500 companies um who are part of the valuable 500 you are all talented, whether you're talented within an agency around campaign, whether you are a writer or content, whether you're a producer and a writer and a consultant. You've got 500 companies here, right? Got 21 million employees out there. You've got supply chains. You know, you're in the business of making representation happen behind and in front of the camera and to be part of the advertising that these companies work with the news. What is it you want from them? I'm going to ask each of you because this is here you go. Here you have that chance to speak to them. What is it that you want 
um, them to start doing differently or to or to stop doing. Um, and I'm going to give you each some chance to do that. So I'm going to start with you, Dom. What is it that you want this 500 community to do differently and to work with Purple Goat or even with yourself? I want them to start somewhere. So instead of having fear around disability and fear of doing something wrong or not doing something perfectly or not doing everything they can is to start somewhere educate yourself on that journey to start somewhere and then and then learn as you go um so often we come across individuals that want to do something that they're you know they're so fearful of doing something wrong that they don't do anything at all and so i think for my biggest and only thing that i'll say is is feel free to start somewhere and, and you know there are people out there obviously like ourselves that can handhold you through that experience to make sure it's not as daunting and scary as it might seem and they can get you where at purple goat right on at purplegoatagency.com excellent andrea so a business that's gone from one to seven we don't want Crip Camp to be one of, like Maltesers campaign was years ago, the only campaign for many, many years. What do you want to do to make sure that we systemically put disability representation intersectionally throughout the industry? What do you want to say to these companies? Where are you? What can they learn from you? What do you want them to do? I think the biggest thing, there are many things, but one is just the acknowledgement that disability is not a monolith. It doesn't look the same on everyone. It, um, we all have diverse perspectives. So remembering that because you have one employee with a disability means you have one employee with a disability and that, that they aren't representing everyone to your point. It's, it's about their specific experience. So really it means that the more the merrier, keep creating space, keep um, thinking about both internally and externally how disability is um, being incorporated, included, and then how you're really showing that you value um, the experiences and perspectives of disabled people. And how can people come and find you, lady? Yes, uh, you can go to either levantconsultinginc.com or andrealevant.com. Fantastic. And, okay. And Nina, over to you. What is it you want to say to these 500 companies as the talent that you have them to bring and what do you want them to do or what do you want them to change doing? I think to recognize that disabled people are people, um, you know, that disabled people are, can be parents and, you know, partners and have socialized and friends and actually want to put a pretty dress on and go out and, you know, to recognize us as consumers and um, also to recognize not, you know, don't want to put myself out of business here, but that disability looks a lot bigger and more varied than white wheelchair users, because we do tend to take up the little space that, um, you know, that we've already got. Well, listen, thank you, all of you. And by the way, Nina, where can we find you, please? Where oh, can where our companies find you? Mainly Instagram until my partner sorts out my website, which has taken about three years. So just um, <laughs> Nina Tame. That's it. Nina Tame. Well, listen, Dom and Nina and Andrea, thank you so much. Thank you for speaking to and challenging our idea of what disability representation looks like. I think it's the biggest opportunity. If there's one thing that is proof of concept of that is how fast your businesses are growing. And for me, it's who are going to be the early adopters who are going to work with you. But thank you for giving us your time because you have very little time, I know, at the moment. So thank you so much again and happy IDPD. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.